guys ready to be on the video you guys are you guys are being recorded on video this 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 video is going to go on my on youtube and you guys are going to be the first ones to you are you are part of this video congratulations you are part of the production all right what is up my nerdy bunch of variants welcome back to nerdy news night and tonight we are going to be reviewing season one of disney plus's loki as the season came to an end, there were many things packed into the six episode season and lots to unpack after each week. We are going to do our usual breakdown review, which is scoring each part 1 out of 10 in a final average. Trying to stay as spoiler free as possible, but remember, the only thing that is fair game, and you can't get mad at me, is for anything that is in the trailer footage or commercials or anything that has been made public access and not exclusive to their streaming service. We are always going to be using these categories and some will be at some may be added later on some may be you know it depends on what we're reviewing the main ones are gonna be one story writing and you know like the, that's the basic the pacing of the story did it make sense was it the right move dialogue and script is number two and that's gonna be the interactions between characters the way the uh, one-liners are de delivered was it just comedic trash talk or you know everything that goes into a script third is character usage so what about the character designs their motivations did they feel right and then overall uh production is going to be the world design and production quality which is our final one which includes cgi effects scoring the music world building like the the whole set the environments that we are immersed in within each episode or movie this again this is like a work in progress like what i think our third video that we're doing for nerdy news night so the structure is going to be changing a little bit as we go on see what flows the best but at the moment these are the four categories first we have story and writing in my opinion the series did start off really strong within the first two episodes great intro to the tva great reason for loki being captured after fucking off from the from new york city in avengers 1 endgame version where he grabs the test rack and fucks off you know that that part yeah so this this picks up right after that we also got a great sense of what the tva is great special effects to capture the beauty of the, each world that they force loki into this like cat and, cat and mouse chase for the loki variant and again this is not spoiler alert because we all know that the main variant that they were chasing was Lady Loki. With the first two episodes starting off really strong, like great, great setup. We know what's what's the, what to expect for the next season, for this season of six episodes. Remember, key, key word is six episode season, guys. Six episode doesn't give you a lot to like build and develop a world. And that's where it kind of falls flat with episode three and four. The story becomes really slow or force and rush pacing with the character development it didn't flow right with the pacing that one and two set up and with that they also had some of the lowest scorings on ign in general within not only the season but within the other mcu series that have been released on disney plus even though you know every series has their roller coaster of ups and downs you know it does rise back up within the last two episodes of episode five and six where we get towards the end of the season with the story itself it's pretty good it keeps us on our seats within the first two and the last two episodes with the character relations being really rushed and forced i did not get as much of a connection to them and i feel like the story and writing falls flat there like the three episode three and four really weighed it down and it feels bad because they were cramming so much but not giving enough time to develop and with in the simplest way without going to spoilers and reasoning for it i'd give this part a six out of ten even though story and writing may ex like break make or break the series it can always be recovered by the dialogue and script now throughout the series the character interactions you know they're pretty good the way they talk and interact the one-liners that are delivered i believe it it's very realistic and what you would expect from each character to say it's not just like a forced line within someone else's mouth here and there we may have like some weak and cliche lines like that kill the mood of each scene like oh my god this is so dramatic this is so epic and then just one line that really like really you, that's what you said you could have said anything else and that would carry the scene more but you you give us this 
all right. But with the comedic lines that also were brought in, you know, MCU is very, very infamous for their comedic delivery. And it never falls short with these characters. I really enjoyed it. When we need exposition with the uh, script writing, with the dialogue, what's being explained, it was not just enough. When we wanted some more suspense and mystery, it carried along just right. But I, even with all of these, and there were still some, some moments of falling flat, again, episode three and four really dropped the ball. They did sneak in a lot of like small references to the MC, to the MC comics. Which I think was right, you know, Marvel Comics, you know. The script definitely helped save this story. And because it did redeem it in a lot of ways, I'd give this part probably an 8 out of 10. As we all know though, it doesn't actually matter about the story, pacing, or one-liners. This is the MCU material. This is a comic book adaptation of characters that we love. So it's really about doing our favorite characters justice. And let me say... This is what probably divides the fan base so much of anything, anything comic book related, especially with Loki. Let's start with our own, our, our known Loki, the one that was taken right after, okay? This is the key thing, guys. This is the one thing to remember on why a lot of people did not like Loki. Right after being taken by the TVA, we all expected evil conniving Loki of Avengers 1 to kind of worm his way out and play cat and mouse with him. However, we kind of threw that all away because it's just, that's not the Loki we got. All that great character development that we got in phase three was basically for nothing because Marvel basically rewrote him entirely. And the only thing that made sense about him being Loki was that it was still Tom Hiddleston. I wasn't against this whole forced character arc because like, I like where he ended up as a personable character. The only thing, though, is that even though he becomes more of a type of, like, a humanistic person, they rushed it. And that's the fat, the sad thing. They rushed his development. Because of this, we got him basically catching up to where he was in Infinity War right before his neck got snapped. But without the drama and the reasoning for it. Remember, this is Avengers 1 Loki. He's evil. He just tried killing off all the Avengers and taking over Earth. And now he's like trying to save things. It's really weird. You know, watch it, make your own uh make your own judgment. Next with our Lady Loki. Honestly, this is probably one of my favorite parts of the series. I love the actress that played her and actually captured what I expected from Tom Hiddleston, Tom Hiddleston's Loki to be. Dodging and weaving, trying to take down the TVA. They were hunting a Loki. I was expecting her Loki, her personality to be the Tom Hiddleston Loki. The evil side that was supposed to be Avengers 1 Loki, basically they threw out and just slapped it into Lady Loki. I, I thought it was great. It gave her great motivation. It was a reason for her to be around. And throughout the series, she had development, but she kept true as well to why she was there. Everything made sense at the end for her. I thought she had the best flow of character development, her pacing was great, the only thing I didn't like, which a lot of people also didn't like, was some type of tension between her and Loki, which, you know, you were going to imagine was going to happen in one way or another because, you know, they're the two, uh, the two main characters. That's, that's just how it is. Our members of the TV8 were amazing. I loved every single actor that was cast, especially our Owen Wilson, you know, taking on the role of Mobius. Wow. This show did some liberty with, uh, did take some liberty with the design and some of the characteristic, uh, traits, the character traits of each, each member, which honestly was needed and helped the series because if you look at the comic, the comic version, they're kind of goofy looking, like, editor, make sure, please, Jamie, put, put it, put it like right here, a picture of the comic accurate TVA. And then put here, here, the TVA that we got. Like the, the design of the characters. Because oh my god, it was such a fucking glow up. I know those who have watched the series, now this is the main thing that everyone wants me to talk about and would want to talk and is talking about, is the big bad mystery character at the end. Sadly, I cannot say much except for wow. 
because it is huge spoiler of the last two episodes and the reason that it's so great the last two episodes is because of the mystery that was developed so I'm not, i don't want to spoil it for anyone that's going to go back and watch loki after this because they're like oh wow this actually sounds good let me just say i'm so happy with the casting i think the the actor chosen did a great job and i can't wait to see how this character shapes the future of the mcu also like just just to throw this out there the other variant loki's amazing the ones you see in the trailers you know kid loki alligator loki classic loki pre vote for loki honestly vote for loki i was hoping that that was our main loki but you know apparently that was just a variant other than that because of the huge drop of like tom hiddleston's loki the character usage was definitely tanked down probably i'd say maybe a 7 out of 10 6 out of 10 i just wish for more flesh out development if they were going to go the route they did of erasing everything that loki was in the mcu because he was not anywhere close to the evil loki he was supposed to be finally we have the world around us now world building and production includes special effects action music just the overall experience that we get from the final product what we are watching on screen i have to say this is probably one of my favorite uh and like favorite world building projects ever of the mcu i loved every design every set the cgi and the special effects used to create the tva um to create every world that we're thrown into along the way it it just was a great great work Marvel treated this series as a chopped up MCU movie with that with the high quality production. I love the costumes. The fight scenes were actually pretty good. Like there weren't as jumpy jumpy as some can be. They felt more smooth. You can definitely tell some of them were not trained like fighter, you know, but you know, what are you, what are you going to do? Hey, you got to give it for what it's worth. There's not much like they can actually like do fist fights. So with the stuff they got, it was good. I enjoyed it a lot. Uh, the Marvel Marvel Studios does a great job landing this mark every time. 10 out of 10. Uh, also, the display of magic that they use between all the Lokis. Holy crap. Mm. Some of the best stuff ever. Overall, Loki is a great ride. It sets up so much of what's to come for the Phase 4. And also rationalized a lot of plot holes that we had in the past because it explained not only the sacred timeline, but the concept of the multiverse to us. And let me just say, after what happened in the Infinity Gauntlet Saga and Phase 3, this one is going to expand Phase 4's universe so much and I'm so excited for what's to come. Uh, if you are a MCU fan, I definitely say this is a must watch as it does have its many faults, this will also help set up for what is to come in Multiverse of Madness, Doctor Strange 2, Spider-Man uh, No Way Home, Guardians of the Galaxy 3, Thor Love and Thunder, like all of those, especially Ant-Man 3 Quantumania, those are all going to have huge tie-ins back to this series. So if you don't have Disney Plus yet and you were contemplating of getting it because you wanted to watch this, go watch it, buy the subscription. It is amazing. I think that Loki takes up a good solid 7 out of 10 at overall. If you guys want an in-depth, safe to spoil review of the entire season or just each episode, let me know in the comments or hit me up on Twitch chat at twitch.tv slash redxr98. Remember to subscribe on YouTube to keep up for all of our latest videos and hit us with a like. Comment down what do you think of this um, series and what do you want me to review next? If you want to see these live every Sunday, make sure to follow me on Twitch. I already said the link, but the link will be down in the description alongside with if you do want to support us and you like what you see consider subscribing on twitch for some really cool channel perks as well and we also have a bunch of cool merch all links will be in the description below till next time see ya okay guys i think that was good you know i'm gonna i'm gonna say that's a solid day when the fuck did you walk in just now as i was talking God damn it, now I gotta take that again. No, you ain't!